Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. John Perry here. Today, I am going to be talking about John Lennox and two-for-one deal. While I'm doing that, I'm going to be showing you some footage from the NOAA. This is kind of like NASA, but for the ocean. They send submarines down to the ocean's depths, and they just film what's down there. It's really awesome. Today, when I'm talking about John Lennox, it's going to be a little bit negative. <laughs> I'm going to be attacking some of the things that he's saying. And uh, I figured, you know, I'm going to lighten the mood a little bit by showing you some amazing creatures at the bottom of the ocean while I do this. John Lennox is a professor at Oxford. He's a mathematician. And in his free time, in his spare time, he does what I guess a lot of people would call apologetics. He goes around talking about uh, reasons to be a Christian, things that he claims to be the scientific reasons for that and the logical reasons for that. So he's a man of science, oh, a man of mathematics. And John Lennox is a man of faith. I have been told that he is one of the greatest intellectuals within the Christian world. I have no qualms with Christianity. If people are getting something valuable from their faith, I'm not going to tell people that they should be doing otherwise. But if their religious beliefs are driving them to misrepresent science, that does bother me. Recently, I was contacted by a podcast called When Belief Dies. It's a great podcast. They interviewed John Lennox about his views on evolution. I'll show you a clip of what he said here in a moment, but they wanted me to look at that interview and comment on it. They, they wanted me to come on the podcast to address some of John Lennox's claims because they thought that some of the things he said might not have been accurate. Well, I watched it, again, expecting that this was going to be like the top Christian intellectual, right? Cream of the crop here. And I was really shocked to find that this conversation was just an hour of what I would call scientific vandalism. This was not the podcast's fault. It's not the host's fault. I mean, they had John Lennox on. It was hard for them to get him on. And it's not a topic that they're experts in, right? It was so frustrating to watch that I actually told them, I was like, look, I'm, I do want to help you address these issues, but can you please just take all of the claims that he makes that you thought were interesting, rephrase those as questions, and then I can come on and I can answer those questions for you. And they did that. And it was actually really, really cool. It turns out that if you take John Lennox's claims, transform them into thoughtful questions, it makes for a really good conversation about evolutionary biology. The podcast is live right now. There's a link to that in the video description. You can go listen to us talking about this. And it was really fun. To be fair, some of what John Lennox said is important. He is frustrated with what he sees as disrespect that he and other religious people who work in math and science sometimes have to deal with from their secular peers. I've been working in science long enough to know that John Lennox is not totally crying wolf here. Researchers who happen to be religious, depending on the field of science they're in, sometimes they do have to work extra hard to be taken seriously. But then when John Lennox goes on to talk about evolutionary biology, I was amazed to hear him just start telling lies about the field in general, and many of the people working within it. I mean, if you're upset that your peers aren't respecting you, I don't think that lying about them publicly is a very wise tactic, but I'm going to show you a clip of him explaining what evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins teaches, and then we will compare that to the actual words of Richard Dawkins. Here we go. Now, the difficulty, of course, with evolution, as you realize, is that the first great confusion, and Dawkins sadly was responsible for it for many years, and that is that neo-Darwinism explains the origin of life as well as the development of life. His famous statement in The Blind Watchmaker that natural selection, and it goes something like the automatic blind process that Darwin discovered, is the explanation for the <coughs> existence and the variation of life. Now, a moment's logic will show you that the first part of that is completely and obviously wrong because evolution, whatever it does or doesn't do in the neo-Darwinian sense, depends on the existence of life to do anything at all. And so it cannot explain the existence of life. That's, that's a nonsensical idea. And uh, thankfully, Richard Dawkins came to admit that, but it took a very long time for him to do so. So to recap that, John Lennox claims that Professor Richard Dawkins has been teaching people for many years natural selection explains the origin of life. If it were true that Dawkins has been doing this, that would be bad because natural selection requires replication in order to work. Where did the first replicator come from? 
This is the big question that origin of life researchers are trying to answer. They still don't know. As evidence that Richard Dawkins is guilty of teaching that natural selection caused the origin of life, John Lennox quotes this from Richard Dawkins' book, The Blind Watchmaker. Here's the actual page from the book. Well, the actual location in the Kindle version of the book. Natural selection, the blind, unconscious, automatic process which Darwin discovered and which we now know is the explanation for the existence and apparently purposeful form of all life, has no purpose in mind. Now, I've got to admit, that's a poorly worded sentence. And it's true that if you look at just this one sentence and purposely ignore the rest of the book, you stop reading right there, you could interpret that poorly worded sentence as Richard Dawkins saying that natural selection, the theory of the blind watchmaker, doesn't just explain the existence of modern life forms, but even the existence of the world's first replicator. However, if you don't ignore the rest of the book, if instead you keep reading, you will find clarification like this in the very same book. The theory of the blind watchmaker, the theory of natural selection, is extremely powerful given that we are allowed to assume replication and hence cumulative selection. But if replication needs complex machinery and Already, all through the book, Dawkins has been describing how complex, how machine-like the molecules are that modern cells use to copy their DNA. But if replication needs complex machinery, we have a problem. Aside from that single sentence explaining that natural selection needs a replicator before it can work, therefore to explain the origin of life, we need to explain the origin of replication, there's also an entire chapter, again, in the very same book, where Richard Dawkins talks about the origin of life and why natural selection cannot be used to explain the origin of the first replicator. Thankfully, Richard Dawkins came to admit that, but it took a very long time for him to do so. Okay, so either John Lennox right here is lying, or I suppose when he says a very long time, what he might actually mean is later on in the exact same book. Now, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of things Richard Dawkins has said and written that I think are wrong, but I've never heard Richard Dawkins claim that natural selection explains the origin of the very first replicator. To the contrary, over 40 years ago, in his very first book, The Selfish Gene, Richard Dawkins says the following, The account of the origin of life that I shall give is necessarily speculative. By definition, nobody was around to see what happened. That is Richard Dawkins over 40 years ago. Sadly, almost all of the rest of the John Lennox interview was more of the same. He just quoted scientist after scientist out of context and misrepresented their actual views, what they actually teach, how the process of evolution actually works. That said, there is now a really cool podcast that you can watch where Sam Davis from the When Belief Dies podcast rephrases most of John Lennox's claims into really thoughtful questions about evolution, and it was a ton of fun to do that.